This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, let's go in here and see if we can figure out what's going on with this cooler. It's not working right. It is Sunday, overtime call, and they've got a cooler, not a temperature. What? The refrigerator guy's here. What do you got going on? Uh, Has it set defrost on it the whole time? A DEF? I think. Well, that could be a problem. The fans are running, though. This is 90 degrees here. Cold. Like no heat. It's quite the contraption we got here. Must have been afraid somebody would sneak in there. The compressor's really, really hot. Discharge line. Discharge line is a little bit warm. It could be temperature coming from the compressor. Let's go ahead and hook onto a suction, see if it's off on thermal or it's just low on charge. All right, so we are pulling into 30 inches of vacuum, which is bad. So either the capillary tube's plugged up or we have a leak. So let's go ahead and turn it off, see if the pressure comes up. Not good, not hardly coming up. I mean, it is very, very, very slowly. This is going to be probably a capillary tube system, most of them are. One of the things to think about here is if it's plugged up, it's not going to let it equalize. The chances are it's plugged cap tube. There ain't going to be nothing I can do about that if that's the case. Dirty coil, still in a vacuum. This does have a TXV, which this is a cross-slung unit. They're usually a little more expensive. So we may have a failed TXV. It'd be great if we could pressurize the high side and blow through. Tell us whether or not we can get through the TXV. Did unplug the unit. Let's go ahead and do a uh, vacuum real quick. Dump some refrigerant in it. All right, stole one of their carts so I can haul this stuff in. A lot of security here because of the type of uh, clients they have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a vacuum on it, even though it's in a vacuum. I'm gonna pull a vacuum on it. So we're gonna dump in maybe eight ounces, something like that. It holds 16, and we're gonna see if it starts to come up. If it comes up, great. If it don't, then we know that the system has a TXV that's clamped down and we're not gonna be able to do anything more with it. We know that the compressor can pull a vacuum, so we know the valves are somewhat good, and uh, we'll have to order parts at that point because there's nothing I'm going to be able to do today. I don't have that TXV. Then we can get on to the next call because I think I have to go to another grocery store. Even hooking the digitals on, we're negative six. Um, I'm not going to do anything fancy here as far as vacuum. We're just going to pull it through the manifold, which is not how I usually do it. You can see my other videos, you know that. I don't have a whole lot of faith in this, but we're gonna try this real quick and see what happens. We've got our blood out. Let's go ahead and throw a little bit in here and see what we get. It supposedly holds 16 ounces, so let's go about half charge. It should like keep it out of the 30 inch of the vacuum that we had earlier. Give it a second uh, since we charged the suction side liquid. side here. Not really feeling anything cold coming through. Warm up to the TXV. Cold after the TXV. Huh. Well, let's go ahead and charge this thing up. And uh, then we'll do a leak search on it and see how bad it is. As you can see, it may have been a while since they've had anything done to it. Got this thing flipped upside down. That way it'll pull through the coil, which is pretty warm. Got that just laying on top of it. I want to see what we're getting. Now, granted, we're only getting half the half the picture of what we got going on here. You can't count by weight because I uh, moved this, the gauges, so this gale's going to be completely off. We went ahead and weighed in the 16 ounces, and with it being 83 degrees in there, I'd say our pressure's probably ain't too far off. Now, as it gets colder, it should drop. 
which makes me think there's a fallacious leak somewhere. I'm gonna go grab a leak detector before we get too cold. Not good. Unless my gauges are leaking. I think they're pretty tight. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Yeah, there must be a pretty good size leak up here. So I've got that thing blowing on me. Oh yeah, it's a pretty good size leak. I'd say it's down there. Come back up here, but it's down that stupid condensate pan. Oh yeah. Not real sure I'm even gonna need bubbles. Look at that oil and stuff. You can see it. I'm not seeing bubbles yet, but there's no other place where it'd be leaking at. We're gonna chop that out and replace it. Now for those ones that watched my Mitsubishi video, or I hate Mitsubishi, they're all like, oh, you got a flare nut back there, it's leaking. No, I don't have a $50 leak detector. So we can get down here close and it'll go for a thousand parts per million. It's hanging there right at 900. Well, let's go down lower. If we go down lower in the actual area. Now look how much higher we are. Yeah, that's the reason why I know whether it's a real leak or a flare leak. So we're chopping that thing out. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut the vertical drops and we'll take out that loop. Or make or remake those with our 180 bender. sitting on the bottom. Wouldn't surprise me it rubbed through the bottom vibrating against that pan. This is gonna be discharge gas, so we're not near as big a deal as what the liquid line's gonna be. So about the horn, horn's width, and we need to stay less wide than two or a fist and a half. Got our bender right there. Yeah this is quite a working environment. So there's our 180. We'll just do two loops. So we know we need about that much rise, so this is gonna be a 90 up. Then we need to make about that much width. So we're gonna go ahead and put our bend about right there. Kind of see that that should be about right. You could get all scientific and use a measuring device, but I don't use measuring devices on PVC, so let's go ahead and do that. So, like I said, about a horn's width, down 180, and then back again, then we'll bend up and up. Once you've got it out there, you're gonna have to do a little criss cross in there, because otherwise it'll hit. You can flatten this back out, like that right there. It's all nice and flat. And we're gonna set it up there and see if we can figure out our bend up. Width-wise, that's gonna fit just perfect in there. Now, like I said, we've gotta bend up. To this one here and we got to bend up to this one right here we'll put the female pocket uh, socket on the other side so coming up barely little finger to the inside of my thumb so there we go i'll put a link to these imperials for amazon link support the channel if you want to buy it off of it great all the links to any tools i use are on there you know, and then always of course there's survival to be used at true tech tools we have to do a little bit of bending and rigging our own Worst case scenario, we'll bend it over a little bit like that. Looks like we might be able to pull this off. The key to making this Hillmar bender work on quarter inch, which nobody else has a quarter inch head that I know of, very few if at all, uh, other than them. Uh, we already got this sized out so it'll fit, so we're gonna warm it up a touch. Now we're not gonna get rosy red, so we don't have to run the nitrogen, so it's back off, police.
that's how you do it without splitting it. So just heat it up a little bit. No carbon in there. There you go. See, no carbon. No carbon. All right. so it don't catch on fire. Somebody spliced that right in the water. That's a good idea. Got it on there. All I gotta do now, put something underneath it so it don't fall down. Purge the nitrogen through this. Get this thing burned in. I'm trying to get this done because I got other calls to do. I'm on call. It's Sunday, so you guys are gonna see this the day I made it. I did not have time to do anything. Got it all in there. Got her braised in. Get that away from the metal because I don't want it to hit against that metal there. Don't want it hitting against the metal over here either. So change this filter dryer and let's get this thing evacuated. All right, so this is an 032 cap TV dryer. Heated it up a little bit, just like you see in there. Expanded it, and we're gonna make that fit in there, and it'll give me a tap so I can do the high side. This has made short work of it, so we got that completely grazed in. We're getting the back on it. We're trying to hurry here because we got a grocery store that we got to go look at yet. This has been non-stop weekend, crazier than normal. I'm adding right now through the high side. It's coming out of vacuum on the low side, which means it's going through the filter dryer, going through the TXV, and getting to the compressor, which tells me that nothing's soldered shut. So we're good there. Didn't get everything on film. You can assume what you want. This is not one of my videos where I show all the goodies that I usually catch some shit from some people saying you're doing too much. So this will be the one where you get sh catch shit for uh, not doing everything perfect. Let's go ahead and get the 16 ounces in here and let's run this thing and see what we get. Like I said, I've been taking care of about four different grocery stores this weekend. You can't fool around doing a bunch of things when you've got thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of food on the line. You just can't spend the time to make everything perfect. Let's go ahead and stop there. We'll weigh the rest in. I gotta get the sides on there and get this top blocked off. Let's see if I can get this thing plugged in. Hopefully this is on a different circuit than the coffee pot beside here. There we go. I'll note that on the paperwork that it needs to be on its own circuit that way. The pop, coffee pot pops the breaker. They don't lose a lot of food. All right, it's been fluctuating around there because this panel's hitting. I'm trying to block it off so it pulls air through the coil and get us an accurate reading. I would say it's every bit of probably 80 degrees in here, so 90, 100, 110. It might be 85 in here. It's a kitchen, so we're about 30 over ambient. The coil's fairly clean. It's brushed off a lot better than what it was. I'm not going to get cleaner out and all that stuff today. So a couple of our braised joints here. I visually inspected them. And even with the fan running on super mode, if there's any leak at all, I think we would find it. So let's go ahead and check these two down here. I'm going to do that before I disconnect my bottle. Okay. Obviously nothing down there in the bottom of the pan. So far we're looking pretty good. 33 degree evaporator, 120 head. We're super hot. We were 85 degrees, we're now at 67. It's dropping pretty quick. You see, you see lights to the back side there. There you go. There you see. So it's not as bad as I've seen. Let's go ahead and get that cover on there. Gonna get the sides on there. That protects fingers from going into the fan. Same thing here. Let's the air blow out the back. Uh, Good to go on that suction. It's definitely coming back cold. Awesome. And uh, our little tubes. They're hot as all get out, so that's going to evaporate any water we get back here at all. So we won't have to worry about that at all. And like I said, that's all vapor, so it's sizing wise is not going to be as critical as if, if it was liquid. So. So I trim that up a little bit. That's gonna let this heat dissipate because man, it is really, really hot back here in this kitchen. So there's all kinds of heat. So got that in there. Uh, box is already at 56 degrees. It's only been running for probably about 10 minutes. 
and pressures and temperatures are looking pretty good. We're already at 115 degree condensing temperature, 27 degree evaporator. We're right in there at 16 ounces like it requested. Everything's looking really good. Um, not excessive high head pressure, low pressure's right in there. So we've got the leak, leak fixed. Um, you know, there's a few things I would have liked to spend more time doing, but it's Sunday. I ran nonstop Friday until 1 a.m. and Saturday until 11.30. It's been a busy weekend. And it's usually not this bad. It's Fourth of July weekend, and I've only had one, two calls so far today, but the next one after this, if I have to go to it, is, like I said, another grocery store. I didn't really record any of that stuff, so that's going to wrap this one up. See if I can get this thing edited and uh, kicked out onto the internet for you guys. Usually I try to release on Sundays. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Check out the tool links. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.